assalamu alaikum so this is our lecture we will continue with the uh, induction motor torque speed characteristic and scalar and vector control of induction motor so simply let's start with recall last time we found the pair phase equivalent circuit and it was the conventional pair phase equivalent circuit we already know in the undergraduate where this is rs the stator resistance jxls jxm jxlr dash and this is r r dash over s So if this is the stator voltage, this will be the IS, this will be the IM, and this will be the IR dash. Now this voltage here is the induced voltage, and we refer it to E1. Now this is the pair phase equivalent circuit so from the pair phase equivalent circuit we found the relation between the torque and the speed and it was te equal 3 over omega s mechanical vs square over rs plus rr dash over s squared plus x ls plus x lr dash squared all multiplied by rr dash over s now using this equation we can plot the torque speed characteristic let us assume that this x is the torque and here this x refer to the speed or the slip and we know that the slip equal in r in s minus in r over in s So here, let's discuss the following scenario that NS and NR in the same direction, but NR less than NS or equal greater than or equal to zero. In this case, the slip is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to one. So at s equal to 1, this is 1, and when n equal to ns, then the slip will equal to 0. And simply here, we can plot the torque speed characteristic. This one is called T max, the maximum torque, and this one here is T start, the starting torque, which equal T e at S equal to one. Now, what about if the prime mover or the load, let's say, caused the motor to rotate in speed larger than synchronous speed so simply here we have the following case this is the ns this is the nr in this case nr greater than ns so the slip will be less than zero 
let's assume that the maximum speed the rotor can rotate is 2 ns 2 ns simply here the slip will be minus 1 and here we can plot the generator action so this is the And this is the case one where one is for motor action and two for the generator action now let's assume that for any reason we exchange any two phases for the induction machine in this case in R will be here in S will be in the opposite direction and in this case we have s greater than 1 and let's assume here we have minus an s so simply we can plot it like this and this will be mode number 3 which is the braking region or the plugging we sometimes call it plugging now the electrical machine can operate either in motor action or in generator action and plugging when the we exchange any two phases of the induction machine now also last time we calculated the the maximum torque and we calculated the the slip at the maximum torque and simply to find T max we should differentiate partial T E by partial S equal to zero and from here we can find S max and S max was equal plus minus R R dash over the square root of R S square plus <coughs> X L S plus X L R dash square now here plus for motor action and the minus is for the generator action now to find t max which equal t at s equal s max and this will equal 2 3 over 2 omega sm vs square over rs plus minus the square root of rs square plus x ls plus x lr dash squared the same thing the plus is for motor action and the minus is for the generator action now from the torque speed characteristic the first thing we can see that is the torque is proportional with ps squared so if we need to plot the torque speed characteristic for different voltages this is the n the s the torque now the synchronous speed and s depend on the frequency and in the voltage control
which is the stator voltage control the frequency is fixed so this means that ns is fixed now the same thing here if we look to the t max t max also proportional with bs square so simply this means that if we have the following s max independent of the voltage so we have the following torque speed characteristic it's like shrinking the torque speed characteristic as the voltage less than or reduce less than the rated voltage at any time vs should not exceed the rated voltage which means that vs can be greater or equal to zero less than or equal vs rated now the interaction between the torque speed characteristic and of the load tl this tl and the torque speed characteristic of the machine decide the operating point that the machine will operate at and it should be in the stable region and simply the machine also uh, should have a starting torque greater than uh, the the load at start In general, the air gap flux in the motor is related to the induced voltage. Stator voltage E one. So the flux equal in lambda. So lambda of the gap, which will equal L M I M. Now from the pair phase equivalent circuit we can calculate I M simply so simply here we can say that I M is equal E1 over X M as a magnitude which will equal E1 over 2 pi F S L M so if we substitute the magnetizing current in the flux linkage of the air gap so lambda of the gap will equal e1 over 2 pi f s which implies that the flux on the gap is proportional with e1 over f s Now, under the assumption that the drop voltage across the stator circuit. can be ignored in this case E1 is almost equal to Bs so to this end the flux on the gap is proportional with Bs over Fs 
So now let's discuss the all possible scenario. The first one, increasing FS. So if FS will increase, this means that the while the voltage is maintained constant at a rated value, of course, the flux on the gap will be reduced. And if we recall the torque speed characteristic, reducing the frequency or in, uh, sorry, increasing the, 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 the frequency will increase the synchronous speed, which means that it will reduce the, the torque. So simply, this implies that omega will be increased but such that the torque multiplied by the omega which equal the power must be constant and simply this called the frequency control now case number two what about if fs is reduced mathematically the flux will be increased but unfortunately this is not the case because if we recall the torque sorry if we recall the i lambda curve or the the h b curve And for actual system, it's nonlinear, BHK. And most of the machines are designed near the knee in order to achieve maximum capability. So increasing the, the current will never increase the flux. So Increasing the current will make the, the machine enter to the saturation in the uh, BH region. So in here, increasing current will enter saturation region on the BH curve. which will increase the core losses and stator cover losses which for sure will make the efficiency very low so no one this one is not valid so the last choice is to make the ratio constant so the last choice is to make the flux the gap which is proportional bs over fs to be constant at rated value because the machine is designed to behave best at the rated value so simply this is the idea behind the constant V over F so here we we'll discuss the constant V over F which means that we need the ratio between the voltage and the frequency to be constant at the rate which equal to Vs rated over Fs Rated. So simply here we can plot the relation between the frequency and the voltage. It will have constant slope. And after that, when we're reaching to F S rated, here 
the voltage Vs must be generated and you are never allowed to impose voltage more than the rated so from here to here this is what we call the constant V over F and after that this is the frequency control or sometimes we call it the field weakening now sometimes we have problem at starting here because at this point the drop voltage across the stator circuit uh, cannot be ignored so simply here we need to boost the voltage and one can simply specify a minimum frequency f min at which we will impose constant voltage v and after that the voltage and the frequency will will follow the constant v over voltage until we are reaching the F rated at which the voltage must be the rated now here we are boosting the stator voltage to compensate the drop voltage across the stator circuit.